Welcome back, everybody. Joining us now from Washington with a look at Axios AM, the co-founder of Axios, Mike Allen. Mike, good morning to you. Uh, give us Axios' one big thing today. Yeah, the Axios' one big thing is the stark new reality for American CEOs. So we were just hearing in the last block about what corporations are doing in response uh, to this moment where racial justice is at the top of everyone's mind. Axios CEO in this new piece, which just popped up at the top of Axios, gives a corporate uh, official's view of what it's like to navigate this. He calls it a bottom-up revolution that if companies don't figure out a way to navigate, they're going to have internal turmoil and external backlash. So what is the formula for doing this? Jim Vandehei in applying some of the principles he's used with the 200 uh, person uh, uh, people of Axios is one constant conversation and action. So as Jim says, there's no market for half-baked, and he doesn't say half-baked, uh, but we'll clean it up a little bit uh, for early morning TV, half-baked efforts at diversity and inclusion uh, is something that uh, needs to be woven in to your uh, company, and uh, you need to uh, have it uh, as a top priority signaled uh, from the top. Second, don't run from tough conversations. You have to embrace, confront tough conversations. And third, Jim says that uh, for a company, doing good is no longer a niche, it's a necessity. Why? This bottom-up revolution employees expect it, and you'll have problems with the recruitment and retention if you don't figure this out. Like Jim's tips here, it's almost a paint-by-numbers um, uh, principles uh, for companies to get started, but you have to believe it, uh, not just mouth it, or it doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, you have to be part of the solution, not part of the problem, right? And when you're actually having these conversations, I would add to that you actually need to listen, a lot of times you have one-sided conversations. You're not hearing what the other person is saying to you. Um, That's while right. I have yeah, you, Mike, excuse me, I, Yasmin, I wanted just, to touch just real on... quick. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say that yes, uh, go ahead. one of Jim's principles is over-communication. And Yasmin, I think you make a great point that that's two-way communication. Let me just sit with you and listen to what you have to say, what you know that I don't, how your life experience is different. So while I have you, I want to touch on um, this tweet, this really troubling tweet from the president yesterday, pushing this conspiracy theory about this 75-year-old man who was pushed to the ground by police officers bleeding out of his ear. Uh, my understanding, he is currently still in the hospital. This is a 75-year-old man still in the hospital because of this fall to the ground, because of this push to the ground. Um, and the president pushing this conspiracy theory out there by OANN. Talk to me about the backlash, if this president will face any backlash because of putting this out. Yeah, on the morning of George Floyd's funeral, no less. So this is fascinating. Morning, uh, yes. aides, to president, aides to President Trump, uh, current and former, rarely are rattled by a tweet. They usually don't say anything about them. They certainly don't complain about them. Jonathan Swan tells me that his phone blew up uh, with these Trump uh, officials uh, after this tweet posted. And the word that he uses is despondent, like they just could not believe it. Uh, as he put it, uh, summarizing the tweets that he got, they were at wits end. Why does it matter? Because as Axios reported, this was a week when the White House aides and the campaign were hoping that the president was going to get his head in a rebuilding restoration, reconciliation, conversation, focus him on crime reform, so much for that. 